Time for another episode of This and That with Lovey. Today we're going to go back to the uh, Rodeo and Historical Society Museum of Fremont County. We're going to look at the historical side today and a lot of good stuff in there about the history of Fremont County from before it became incorporating people were here till till modern times and so we're going to look at that and hopefully if you like what you see uh, hit the subscribe button and and tell everybody else I'll tell all your friends that this and that with Lovey's new channel all right Vogel popcorn theater it says celebrating business and then to entrepreneurship in Fremont County from the 1800s to the 1900s. And talking about Vogel Popcorn down in Hamburg, Iowa, that was a big deal. Cadillac of Popcorn, I think it's started in the 30s. And of course, there's your Vogel Redenbacher down there. There's some of the buildings down in Hamburg. I think the big claim to fame that I know was Art Vogel had a horse in the Kentucky Derby that um, got third place in the Kentucky Derby. So that was a big deal back in in the day. Vogel Popcorn. Walking inside the main museum, it's not really very big, a couple of parts to it. This is the historical society side of the museum. We're just going to make a little walk and tour here. This is the prehistory of Fremont County and they found a bunch of stuff here over the years. Um, a couple of mammoth tusks listed in this display right here. And of course, all kinds, there's a couple of sets of teeth, a couple of skulls, some bones, all caught from Fremont County. Then going on, the next section has a little to do with the early exploration settlement from 1800 to, I guess, I don't know if that's 18. 40, it appears to be 1840. A little bit about the Native Americans. There's a all kinds of, uh, oh, I'm gonna call them relics, Native American arrowheads, some stones, obviously some Indian moccasins and so forth. And the big contest is one of the parks down here, of course, the is named the uh, Wabonzi State Park after Chief Wabonzi. Chief Wabonzi, um, we didn't have natives, but uh, it says here they were of the Potawatomi tribe, and there's a county north of us called Pot, Pot, we call Pot County, Potawatomi County. He settled with 300 people near Tabor, and he died in 1848, and he's buried west of Tabor. And there's a picture of Chief Wabonzi, one of the most famous. Native American around this particular area. A few little ar other artifacts. A lot of this stuff was made. This is something donated, I guess they said by uh, Doc Love Lady. This is very, very old. Little vest. And Vivian Knapp. Maybe Knapp was born in 1883, went to Drake University. She had a passion for Fremont County, it said, and it was, uh, this is a drawing from kind of what she looked up, a drawing of the history of Fremont County. There's a little picture of it, and that's the Missouri River, obviously. And I think the interesting fact on it, she's got things on here. She's got an area in here that says, the last buffalo was killed near uh, it says Mormon Cemetery in 1856, just kind of between Shenandoah, I guess, between Shenandoah and Farragut. Bunch of stuff in here. This kind of interesting little article, little picture. Buffalo. 
Buffalo Grove. And a bunch of early powder horns, black powder stuff back in the day. Mormon families used to come across the bottom on their way to Gainesville, which would be Council Bluffs. Over here, Civil War era, 1855 to 1865. And of course, we had a bunch of participants in the Civil War. Obviously, I did, and I know that my wife's great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, fought down the Lone Jack during the Civil War. And this is a flag. It's a reproduction, a flag that was copied from and original that was brought back from Art Claiborne, who was my wife's uncle. His grandfather brought back the, rem the flag from the Civil War. It says he pluribus unum on it. And it's kind of interesting. It is a replica of a flag that was a battle flag, I believe, down there in the Civil War. And I think that uh, there's more to it. I think it was at the Battle of Shiloh. some more information down here about the Battle of Shadow Captain James Day. One of the oldest homes in Fremont County, Seal Sandy, was built in 1860 by James Day before he went off to fight the Civil War and was, he was a captain at the Iowa Guard and he fought at the Battle of Shadow, was wounded at the Battle of Shadow and uh, came back and became a member of the Supreme Court in Iowa. And so if you want to come down to Sydney, Iowa and look at this, one of the oldest homes built in 1860, it's been added on to a few times, but you can still see Captain James Day's home in Sydney, Iowa, Fremont County. Of course, you got some cappies down there, some Civil War stuff. There's another one down here. And of course, after the war was over, they had their reunions. GR reunion, Sydney, Iowa, September 1st, 1909. Here's one from 1916, the old soldiers reunion. Huge crowds attended the Chautauqua each summer. And they've even got some of the people's names on here. Now I find something else interesting right here. This came out of the Rolling Stone School when they tore it down in 1918. And it is a picture of General Robert E. Lee. And of course, person wonder, well, how'd that ever happen up here? But I think that after the war, he was still pretty popular. Popular person, I don't know how popular he is today though. Sleigh donated by Gilbert Benson. This is this is the mode of travel back in the day. Obviously, it's a wood rim. I mean, you know, it's metal on wood. That's kind of interesting. Look at these gloves. <laughs> Masons, Knights, and Odd Fellows. We got those organizations around here too. New Century, blossoming of a new century. Talking about the orphan train in the 1800s, and there is a picture of it. From 1853 to 1929. 300,000 children moved out of New York City in 1904. Such a train came through Sydney while the children were taken to the Methodist Church to be viewed by prospective parents. And there's some, a couple of kids here. 
from the orphan train. One went to the Hume family, one of the Maxwell family, one to the Hutchinson family, it said, in Sydney, Iowa. Took a bunch of children. Here is a typical pre-Victorian, I guess Victorian, Victorian display in the museum. I like the old, the old stove there, a wood burning stove, obviously. Kind of interesting little display here. Ironing board. The one in this little room right in here. Hamburg's first car. Hamburg's first car. Dr. Hoover and presumably Mrs. Hoover. but you've got to come back on down. If you're in Fremont County, Iowa, Sydney, you want to come down to the Rodeo Museum and Historical Society Museum. <laughs>